I've been blogging and creating YouTube videos about nutrition, intermittent fasting, and weight loss for almost five years now. And recently I was scrolling through some really old blog posts of mine, and I came across one called three ingredients I put in every smoothie. And we've got to talk about it because now looking back, I was wrong. If you're new here, my name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance. I use smoothies all the time, pretty much every day. I've made literally thousands of smoothies. I've even done smoothie demos at places like Thrive Market back in my day. <laughs> that being said, the ingredients that I put in this blog post are about 67% inaccurate. Let's dive into it. Okay, so the first ingredient I wanna talk about is actually the second one listed in this blog post and that's maca. I really did used to use maca in pretty much every single one of my smoothies. I think I've actually been using maca since I was about a sophomore or a junior in college, but lately I've used it less and less if at all. So what I originally wrote in this blog post back in 2018, maca is one of my favorite superfoods. Researchers have found a variety of incredible benefits from this Peruvian root. Studies show that maca can boost energy, increase your glutathione levels, your body's natural source of antioxidant activity, and improve your memory. It's also been found to balance hormones. The reason why I now take issue with what I wrote back then is because I don't want anyone to think that adding maca into their smoothies is something that they have to do. For myself personally, back Back then, maca was a great choice to be putting into each of my smoothies. I was really focused on getting my stress levels under control, and it can still be a useful ingredient used for specific cases. But unlike something like protein, it's not something that everybody needs to have every single day, nor is it something that everyone needs to be spending money on. I never want adding unnecessary, expensive superfoods be a barrier to you to create high quality, delicious smoothies that help support your goals. And that's something that after working with clients for years, I've come to see as an important note that we really need to talk about. A lot of people think that they can't make healthy smoothies because they don't have access to these superfoods. And that's not the case at all, which is why I've started to use some of these superfoods less and less in my smoothies. In fact, at the end of this video, I'm going to be updating my list of the three ingredients that I now put in every single one of my smoothies. So make sure you stay to the end so you can hear that. Which if you guys are liking this video so far, it would mean the world to me if you give this video a thumbs up, it really helps support my channel and it helps me to keep creating more free content just like this. Okay, the next ingredient on this list that we need to talk about is coconut butter. A lot of my community had no exposure to coconut butter before my smoothies and before my recipes. In fact, let me know in the comments below if this was the case for you. Like, had you even heard of coconut butter before? Or was this like a brand new concept? And I still do love coconut butter and I still use it in quite a lot of my smoothies, but not really on the daily, not in every single smoothie. So what I said back in 2018 about coconut butter is that coconut butter is a little different than coconut oil. Coconut oil is is the oil extracted from coconut meat. Coconut butter is the blended meat, so it includes healthy MCTs, some fiber, and various minerals. I love adding it to every smoothie of mine because it boosts the satiety level of my smoothie, ensuring that I won't be hungry in an hour or two. Due to the MCTs in coconut butter, it's also an excellent metabolism booster. Now there is research behind MCTs being a really useful tool for boosting satiety and therefore helping to achieve a weight loss goal, so that is still accurate. And it really keeps you satiated. Like if you have ever ever tried putting coconut butter in a smoothie, there's just something about coconut butter versus other different types of fats that really keep you full for many hours on end. But do you need to be getting the high quality fat in your smoothie purely from coconut butter? No, you can get satiety perks from other forms of fat. Coconut butter is just one of them. I personally have an arsenal of a bunch of different types of fats that I like to add into my smoothies. But overall, especially from a weight loss perspective, the main perk of all of these is that they are a high quality source of fat. And that fat will help to keep you satiated, help to prevent cravings, and make it easier not to snack between meals. But one kind of leg up about coconut butter is that it does tend to be so much more satiating than other fats, maybe because of the MCTs within it. So if you really struggle with satiety, that might be a good option for you. Okay, then we have chia seeds. So what I wrote then is many of us aren't getting enough heart healthy omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3s help to reduce inflammation in your body and inflammation has also been linked to almost every chronic disease, including heart disease, obesity, diabetes, and cancer. Chia seeds contain a high level of omega-3s as well as calcium fiber and protein. In fact, it's a great source of plant-based protein for vegans and vegetarians. Now, I still personally use chia seeds in pretty much every single one of my smoothies, but the reason why I use it has changed. Over the years, I found more and more research backing the quality of protein as being such an important factor for weight loss, but also wellness goals. So obviously body recomposition, maintaining or building muscle mass is one of the main things we often think of when it comes to protein, but there's also making sure that we don't experience bone loss while we're losing weight, which is actually a pretty common problem 
problem during the weight loss process. That's where high quality protein can come into play. And because of that, I no longer view chia seeds as a really significant source of protein. And that's because of the low digestibility of the proteins within chia seeds. Now there isn't a ton of information or research around the digestibility of chia seed proteins, but I was able to find this. The sample of chia seed that was treated with grinding got a low score of digestibility, 79.8%. The rest of the samples did not achieve any digestibility classification. And then another more recent 2022 study confirmed this by saying chia seeds only have about a 50% digestibility, making it an incredibly low quality protein. And if you guys saw my video on the perks of whey protein powder, you saw my explanation of the Diaz digestibility score. Basically anything that scores under a 75% is considered a very low quality protein and really shouldn't even be considered a protein because of that. Now this isn't to say that chia seeds doesn't have its perks. Protein just isn't one of them. So now here's my updated 2022 list of what I put in every single smoothie. Now the first is chia seeds. I'm keeping it on my list because I found when it comes to fiber and helping to feel full and satisfied, chia seeds is the best option. It's incredibly high in fiber. Just two tablespoons has around seven grams of fiber. I also prefer this over other sources of fiber that a lot of people like to use in smoothies like psyllium husk. I know that a lot of people like psyllium husk, but I prefer chia seeds because it does contain both fat and fiber and additional nutrients that psyllium husk just doesn't have. Okay, the second thing I add into every single smoothie is any type of high diaz protein. Protein is one of the most absolutely crucial ingredients to be having at every single meal, including in your smoothie. It helps protect from muscle loss, so it helps to maintain your metabolism, helps prevent bone loss, and it repairs all tissues within the body. In my opinion, protein quality has been so underemphasized in the nutrition community, or at least from the weight loss perspective, that it's been a hindrance for so many people to achieve their weight loss and wellness goals because they haven't been focusing on this one key important factor, and that's protein quality. My two favorite sources of protein to be putting into a smoothie are Greek yogurt, especially the full fat unsweetened varieties, and zero sugar protein powder. In fact, I actually recently developed my own zero sugar pasture raised 100% whey isolate protein powder. It tastes incredible in smoothies. It mixes really well, no chalky feeling. And a lot of you guys have reported that you used to think that you had an issue with whey, but once you tried my new protein that's using 100% pure whey isolate, you've noticed no bloating or no issues. And that it just tastes really great. <laughs> because you guys know me, I can't create something that doesn't taste amazing. I even created a free download that includes 10 free recipes with every bag of protein, including things like protein packed smoothies and grain-free oatmeal and protein pancakes and protein waffles. So you can check out my new zero sugar protein powder with the link in the description below, or you can find it at autumnlnutrition.com forward slash shop. Okay, the third thing I add to every smoothie is a high quality fat. So this could include coconut butter, but it doesn't have to be just one type of fat. Coconut meat, avocado, hemp seeds, flax seeds, chia seeds, peanut butter, almond butter. This is a great way to switch it up, try new flavors, but still get that satiating fat, help you feel satisfied and help to prevent cravings in between meals. In fact, you can test out one of my recent favorite smoothie recipes that include all of these ingredients with this video right here. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.